Are you tired of all the voices who say, focus on the bottom line numbers? Say whatever you have to. Just close the sale. Just get the credit card. It doesn't matter what you deliver. You will never build a successful business until you grow a pair and stop caring so much. Here, we respectfully disagree. We give you permission to embrace who you are, how much you care, and encourage you to design a business that works for you and your clients. Welcome to The Art of Giving a Damn, the podcast that proves with every single episode that you can create a profitable business doing what you're passionate about and making a positive difference in the world. So we're all busy, we're working moms, we all have our children, and we all are walking around with the guilt that our children don't feel our love enough because we're so busy telling them what they're not doing right and how they should sit up straight and, you know, uh, do their homework before they go out to play and uh, love their little brothers and never fight. So I created a free download, which is just one page, and it takes 60 seconds, and it's divided into three steps that are clear for any mother, and I know that we all have 60 seconds a day, as busy as we are, and as, you know, um, out of the house, many hours out of the house as we can be in, and whatever we're contending with. So in your 60 seconds, when you download the One Minute Mother, you will now know the three steps that it takes to create a loving memory. And I find that when we put loving memories into the memory bank, on the love bank between mother and child, that sets the foundation for any kind of parenting and requests and demands that we have down the road. And it's something that once we get used to and we know how to do, I say we have confidence when we have confidence. So when you know how to, you will. So if you go to the mommy guilt expert and you download the free gift, you will have immediately in your hands the one minute mother where you will go through step one, two, and three, which works on any age and any stage child from when you're holding them in your arms until they're, you have to call them up from outside when it gets dark, when they didn't even want to come in and do homework and eat dinner. And that's for all of us, no matter what our profession is, no matter what age our children are, and you're the one that's going to fill in the blanks to love your child and create a memory that will last a lifetime. I think that working moms who need to streamline their parenting and their skills at work are going to feel so at home in my GPS method, because all you have to know is the colors of the traffic light, and I explain everything. Green, love, go. Red, authority, no. And yellow, trust, slow. All three components can be used at home to parent and raise the most loving, um, capable, mature children while you invest in your career. And the same exact skills can be transferred and implemented in your workplace so that when you're working, you're practicing to be a better mom. And when you're at home on a long weekend, using those skills, you go back Monday morning, so much more um, ready and capable to enhance your business and expand it. So it works for moms, dads, anybody who is involved in raising your child. And I prepared a bonus for your audience, for the special moms who are dedicated and devoted and committed and just need me to hold their hand, take them through it so that they can enjoy every single moment they're raising their child and not be concerned that they'll have regrets looking back, thinking, I could have and I should have done it differently. So if they go to www.buygpsnowbonus, again, buy GPS now bonus, they will receive lifetime access to this GPS online program and the extra bonus, which is a secret, but it's something that is going to resonate with working moms and all of you will enjoy what I am giving you, prepared for you, what I struggled with raising my six children. And I want to ask you to join thousands of working moms across the globe, learning how to live and love raising their children while they invest in their career. Now, here's your host, 
Michelle Schaefer. Hey, welcome to another episode of The Art of Giving a Damn. My guest today has a very different perspective on what makes relationships work and how it impacts your business. Alexandra, welcome to the show. Thank you, Michelle. It's really a treat to be here and to give a damn. I am excited to have this conversation. I have questions for you, but let's start with an introduction for those who may not be familiar with you yet. Alexander Stock- Alexandra Stockwell is a physician turned relationship and intimacy expert. As a wife of 23 years, congratulations, and a mother of four, again, congratulations, you have survived that. Uh, you believe the key to passion, fulfillment, intimacy, and success in a couple's relationship isn't compromise. So we're going to talk about that. It's being unwilling to compromise because when both people feel free to be themselves and know how to love and be loved for who they are, that's when the relationship becomes nourishing, satisfying. And for the last 20 years, you have been showing men and women how to bring pleasure and purpose into all aspects of life, from the daily grind of running a household to successfully growing a business to creating ecstatic experiences in the bedroom. You help build connected, happy families by facilitating healing and transformation for couples. Okay, let's start with the compromise thing because I know I'm not the only one sitting here thinking, but everybody says, and I don't know who they are, but they all say uh, that you're supposed to compromise. You're supposed to, you know, meet in the middle. So Talk to me about that. Well, they all do say that. I, yeah. I this isn't like st- uh, research based research based matter, but I really think it's the most common advice given across the board. Like, oh, you have to learn to compromise. Marriage or long term relationship is all about compromise. Yes, and I think that is absolutely not the case. There are relationships which are abusive and toxic, and that is a situation, but the majority of couples, like way more than 50%, live in relationships of toleration where there's monotony, habituation, and it's just marinating and compromise. And um, so, yeah, I suppose, you know, it's good to be able to compromise in business to, in the sense of considering other people's perspective. Right. But when it comes to happiness, compromise is really never the path there because when you compromise, you are holding yourself back. Mm. You are accommodating for someone else's comfort. And that really, we don't have a switch where we can turn that on and off. So the way this plays out typically in a relationship is that Um, usually both people are doing this, but in any case, one will not ask for what they want because they're going to compromise. And this isn't about overrunning everything. Mm -hmm. It's about being uncompromising and saying what you desire and what you're willing to offer and what you want. And then the two of you can negotiate from there, but at least it's all on the table and you bring all of yourself. If you don't ask for all of what you want, you will never get it. Well, that's absolutely true. And, you know, I think when I look at a lot of people around me who are in relationships, they lose themselves. It's like they, there are parts of them that I know are so important to them that just kind of disappear. And I think that does go to the compromise idea. And it's what we're all taught. And it's what we see is, you know, you got to compromise, you got to meet in the middle. And I, I, I've never heard anybody put it the way you do, that there are certain things that not only are worth being uncompromising about, but that the only way for you to really be happy and therefore to be in a happy relationship is to know what those areas are, that you've got to put everything on the table and say, this is key. This is what I need. Yes, I think you have eloquently in your own words expressed exactly the essence of what I think is so important here and um like one of the things that happens over time and I think this is really true for women and for men in different ways that when one is oriented towards compromise as the way to make things work uh, you tend to lose touch with what you want so if I'm talking with a couple or even just with one of them, and I say, well, what do you want? For 
people who are successful in the world, they're respected members of the community from the outside, people think the relationship is great. And when it comes down to it and they listen to that quiet voice, the place where I think one really does give a damn. And the answer is, I don't know. It's like people are out of the habit of honoring themselves all the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's such a key question, but yeah, I mean, there were, there's probably literally a decade in my last relationship that, that didn't work out. So, you know, case study for why compromise doesn't necessarily work, um, where I couldn't have answered that question. I couldn't have told you what I wanted or, or what I needed, um, you know, because it, it does take knowing yourself and really being able to look in a mirror to be able to express that. And if you can't express it, then it's unrealistic to think anybody else can meet those needs. Yes, yeah. because it's key to express it. And it's each of our responsibility to do the work to also accept it. One of the things that I, I'm going to describe an exercise I did, oh, maybe 15 years ago. Okay. And it sounds so simple for anybody listening. You could think, oh, that's a nothing, but you try it because it really pulled the rug out from under me. Although when I first heard of, you know, I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. I never would have imagined that. And uh, it consisted, I set an alarm for every hour for a few days. And I, when the alarm would go off, I stopped and I would write down, I feel, you know, fill in the blank, however I felt. And this is a right way to feel. Huh. And I'm, I mean, I was a physician. I have four children. I'm used to getting a lot done. And it's not by sitting with my feelings and knowing what I want and how I feel that I was able to do everything that I was doing every day. And um, it was super confronting for me because when I started, I, I was like, I feel uncertain what to do but that of course is not a feeling yeah I could see where that that exercise could bring up a lot uh, I might have to try that it's very profound yeah and I think particularly for smart high functioning people it's edgy if you really you know literally take a breath to check in with how you feel yeah. and then for me, that was the hardest part, but then to immediately afterwards really write, and that is the right way to feel, is a very important part of the whole process. Yeah, I'm sitting here imagining myself doing that, and there's a lot of things, just even thinking about it coming up for me, that I'm like, I don't know that once I identify that, I could write down the words to follow it, that's a right way to feel. That's, wow, that is something to think about. Yeah, so that really was one of the portals that I went through in my own life that had me come to this conclusion about being uncompromising as the way to really be passionate. And another way that I put this um, is if you're used to compromising and accommodating and holding back in daily life, you know, in household matters, right. how you do anything is how you do everything. That's my favorite personal growth saying. I think I've even heard you say that on stage. It's the thing that I just love so much because of its truth and potency. How you do anything is how you do everything. So if you are compromising in your daily life, and now it's time to go into the bedroom, we don't have a switch that we can flip and be expressed and passionate and juicy and go for it and just like letting it out and available for the most succulent connection when how you do anything is how you do everything and we've been more accommodating in our perspective. So um, there's like the, the philosophy and the wholeness around being uncompromising with elegance and kindness and not domination. Maybe we could right. talk about that. There's really an yeah. art to giving a damn and an art to being uncompromising. But yeah. one of the things that does motivate people is wanting more sensual passion, right? which just isn't available 
in a world of compromise. That's true. And that is, that is an important part of having a successful relationship is that connection as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's talk about that. And let's talk about the connection between this and business, because a lot of my listeners, in fact, the majority of them are women who are both in a relationship and running a business. And there isn't a switch. It's hard to go from compromise in household stuff to empowered in your business. I mean, that's not, it's hard to juggle that. And then it's also hard, I know, for me to come across in a very direct, empowered way in my business without feeling like I've crossed a line. And, in, in, you know, you, you mentioned dominant and, and that controlling in business. I think for women, we feel like we're coming across as bitchy. So talk to me about that. I'm just going to throw all that at you. I will. I will. That really is it. And, and uh, so if you're successful, really in an empowered way in business, then it's hard to go home and genuinely feel supported and not kind of treat your husband or partner like an employee. So yes, all of that is there. And um, I think what I'd like to do is give a tool for navigating it. And then we can back up and talk about more about how this works. Because um, the main way to um, overcome the tendency to compromise is to again, know what you want or know what your truth is. It's not always a desire. It could be an insight or an observation Mm -hmm. and to communicate it. So the way to communicate it so that it's successful and you want to create a positive feedback loop when you have the courage to be uncompromising in these ways, the first thing is to ask the person, uh, whether it's a, a business associate or your beloved, to say, are you available for me to share something? Now, if it's at home, you might say, are you available to sh- for me to share something I'm vulnerable? And uh, at work, I might say, are you available for me to share something that's really quite important? But you want to bring attention and get a yes from both people who are going to participate. Because if that person is a no or unavailable, then the rest of the communication is dead in the water. That's a great tip for a starting place. And then... And part of that definitely is being open for the truth of the answer, which is either going to be yes or no or not yet. So once there's a yes, then there are two things to convey before saying whatever the content is. The first one is why you want to share it okay, and what your desired outcome is. Mm. And why you want to share it In a way, it's more important for the person sharing because it requires them to have awareness, consciousness, clarity, and it's not just some like unfettered vent. It's it's much more deliberate and claimed on the part of the speaker. And then what my desired outcome is really is massive for the person listening because including that ends up being the difference between the person feeling attacked blamed uh, any very uh, like any variation which is not going to go well for the communication versus oh that's the gold and they can rally around creating it as well and I have been able to say some outrageous things after setting it up in that way not outrageous yeah. for the sake of outrageous really good-hearted yeah. but things that I might not have said and had gone well if I hadn't set it up that way. That that makes total sense to me because I know sometimes I've had those conversations that I I felt attacked in and and I had to step back and ask, okay, okay, what's the outcome that we're shooting for here? Because if you do clarify that, then you can look at it from a different perspective where you're both on the same team, whether it's in business or relationship and be able to go, okay, well, based on that outcome, what about this? And you can have a constructive conversation. So I love that tip. Yeah. So in business, if it, when it's true, it's very important to be truthful and not manipulative, but when it's true to say, you know, I, I want to tell you this because blah, 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 blah. And my outcome is that we can create bonuses for everybody. Oh, I like that. That would get my attention. I would be open. Right. To that. And then yes. that when that is honestly the motivation, yeah. you can never like we don't speak with people who can read our minds. It's so important to actually say it. And in a way, the whole paradigm of compromise 
in an unconscious manner includes the hope that people will read our minds and know how much something matters to us. And that just doesn't happen. That is a great point. I hadn't thought about it that way, but that's true. When we're not expressing it, we just, we have this false notion that somehow psychically we're going to like transmit that and they're going to get it and it doesn't work. Right. And it results in feeling taken for granted, developing resentment. And so when we are uncompromising in doing the work to know what you really want to communicate and speaking it cleanly with kindness, completely, but not too much, Mm -hmm. and really setting it up for success. It's truly astounding how things which seem stuck and impossible start flowing again. Yeah, that's great. I just wrote that down. Actually do the work to know what you really want. I think that's a step that so many of us don't take the time to really think through. Yeah, it's true. And um, we also have all kinds of societal baggage around desires. And the reality is, we never choose our desires. We choose our response to them or we're, we have compensatory responses. I mean, we, we can choose our response to them. Sometimes people have a kind of automatic response, but what we actually desire, we can't reason that, we can't hope for it. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. And the more we can accept that and not judge it, it doesn't mean we act on it. Yeah. But then we're not like, amputating a part of ourselves we can just you know that's a power visual yeah Hmm. but having a desire and acting on it are two very different things I just want to be really clear but but suppressing desires never works we're not as humans built to do well with suppressing our desires then they come out sideways or cause other difficulties yeah, they, they have a way of making themselves seen. <laughs> That's right. We we don't have like a back supply closet in our beings that we actually can forget about with success. <laughs> that is incredibly true. Um, so, you know, let's shift gears here for a moment. I think we've given people a lot to think about when it comes to the relationships and kind of business stuff. But one of the things I wanted to talk with you about, because it it's sort of mind-blowing to me uh, is you, first of all, you've been in this business a while, like you decided this was what you wanted to focus on, but you've built your business with almost zero marketing, it sounds like. So talk to me about that piece of things, uh, where your business is at and how you got it there. Yeah. Yeah, I will. I think it's really important. I'm glad you asked. So uh, I I built my business exclusively through focusing on being good at what I do, being more skillful, more masterful in facilitating transformation. And uh, it's still true that there is always something that I'm looking to refine or perfect. And uh, since it's been years that clients are always very grateful, but typically clients are happy and satisfied with what they're receiving because attention in itself is transformative but I was clear oh but I could have done that a little better I could have gone deeper I could have um, suggested this exercise or whatever so through focusing exclusively on being really good at what I do I grew my business to a multiple six-figure business just through people meeting me referrals um, and then I decided actually I really want to change the cultural narrative around committed relationships. And then I need to reach many more people than my um, immediate circle and connections from there. And so, yeah, it's been about a year that I, for the first time, turned my attention to branding and marketing. And it makes for some very funny conversations because on the one hand, I'm a well-established and advanced uh, business person in what I do. And in other areas, like, oh, I I never did that. I've never placed a Facebook ad. I'm getting ready to do that in the next month. But I, I feel like totally naive and green while, you know, quite masterful with clients. It's a funny tension. 
I totally understand. Uh, you know, it's what's cool about that to me is that I think sometimes when we start a business around what like our natural gifts or talents are, we get so wrapped up in all of these different hats we're supposed to be wearing and all of these things we're supposed to learn that we're not focused on continued mastery of what we do when really the best possible marketing is satisfying clients. The best possible marketing is people out there saying, Alexandra changed my life. Here's how go talk to her, you know, and there is a point where you do start to look at, okay, how do I scale this? Because I want to make more of a difference, not just for my little community right here, but I want to, like you said, change the cultural paradigm around it. And that's where a lot of marketing strategies come in. But there are so many business owners I know who they've gotten to a great level of success without trying to wear all those hats by just focusing on mastery. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's different if you have a product versus a service. And yeah. by product, I don't mean like a digital product. I mean like you make candles. Right. And when you I'm saying ship something, yeah. yeah, exactly. But if your business is essentially an expression of who you are, then be that and be that in a way that people can experience. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So it sounds like you've got some plans for uh, world domination in a sense. I'm a little resistant to domination, but honestly, I definitely want to dominate over current ideas because we have, we don't have role models in society for successful long-term relationships. I used to ask couples like, whom do you admire? And they would just come up empty. Well, and it's something that I think part of that is there were generations that just didn't talk about those issues. It wasn't something that was talked about. So even if you saw your grandparents, your great grandparents who had this amazing relationship, you have no idea how they did it. And, you know, before they passed, I know my grandparents had a great relationship. I didn't know that I should ask them questions about how that worked. Even when we are lucky enough to have parents or grandparents with a great relationship, the dynamic in that relationship probably isn't right for you because generations change quickly. So there's a feeling to aspire to, but how it's created isn't available. And actually, I really think the biggest cause for dissatisfaction in relationships is a lack of education, which is why in moving into marketing and branding, my focus really is on making education available to couples. Oh, that, that's something there are so many times I interview somebody on the show. And the thing I want to say is thank you because nobody taught us that in school, right? They're there's just so many things that are essential life skills to be happy, to succeed, that you can't put them into a math worksheet so they didn't teach them, you know? And I think it's so important for us to look at, okay, what areas of my life do I want to change and go find the people who can help you change that? Absolutely. And um, even if you don't know exactly what you want to change, Start somewhere and it will reveal there there are always like Hansel and Gretel and the breadcrumbs. There are breadcrumbs, their story didn't exactly turn out well, it did turn out well in the end, but I mean along the way. But every breadcrumb of a training, a book, a coach will open something and show you what to look for next. Yeah, absolutely. That is incredibly true. Um, so for those who are listening and thinking, okay, I want to know more about Alexandra, you can find her website at alexandrastockwell.com, alexandrastockwell.com. We'll put a link somewhere in the show notes near the video, wherever you're watching this. Uh, when you go, be sure you click on that menu and go to articles and interviews because she's got some fantastic articles and links to other interviews she's done that will give you more of what she shared here, more exercises, more tools that you can use to transform your relationships. I would read the titles, but that would make this show rated E. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, I think everybody will, will get what the hint there is. If you're looking to improve your relationship, make sure you stop by her website, take a look at that. And uh, Alexandra, we got to have more conversations about your um not domination, but your changing of the world paradigm around this, because uh, there's, I can see all sorts of uh, really great things in the future that uh, not just for you, but for all of the people that you touch, 
and change the way they're looking at this because it is a huge shift. So thank you, not just for being on the show, but for what you're doing in the world. Michelle, thank you so much. I, I so appreciate that reflection. Absolutely. All right. For those of you listening again, make sure you go to Alexandra's website, click the link near this video or audio, wherever you're listening and check it out and share it with anybody you know who's in a relationship or looking to make their relationship better, uh, they will thank you for it. As always, please click like, rate, review, subscribe to the show, and we will see you back again on another episode. Have an amazing day.